everyone. This is Christine Vallis, and we are moving through the year 5784, the year of the door. It corresponds with our year 2024. And you know, when you go through a door, any door, there is a period of transition, right? And that is exactly what this new biblical month coming up is all about. It's the biblical month of ER. So stay tuned for the chalkboard teaching. We're going to look at the Old and New Testament and see the faithfulness of God in seasons of transition. So be blessed, guys. Know that God loves you, and thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of ER. And in biblical history, this month is known as a month of great transition and great revelation. And you know, we need a great revelation of who the Lord is every day of our lives, but especially in times of transition. So here in the chalkboard teaching, we are going to look back at the Old Testament and even in the New and see how God revealed himself during these times of transition. Because it was in the Old Testament in this month where God redeemed the Israelites out of Egypt and they began a time of transition in the wilderness, but they didn't really know who God was or how to even walk in freedom. So we'll see how God revealed himself to them there. Even in the New Testament, in this month of ER is when Jesus walked the earth in his resurrected body and revealed himself to the disciples who were in a transition themselves. And you know, even now in real time, we have passed over and are now transitioning into this new spiritual year and moving into the promised land that he has for us and he has secrets to share. My name is Christine Vallis and I am blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar in real time with you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and I pray this teaching is a blessing to you. So I want to start here on the chalkboard and look first at the Hebrew letter that's connected to this month of ER, and it's called Vav, and it's right here in the middle of the chalkboard. It is a picture of a nail or of a connecting pin, even a tent peg. And every um, letter in the Hebrew alphabet has a numerical value as well, and the numerical value of Vav is six. And that is the number of man. And it's on the sixth day that God created man. He connected with man as he breathed his breath into Adam. And they had perfect fellowship there in the garden. But through Adam's sin, man lost that connection with the Father. But through the second Adam, who is Jesus, he reconnected us back to the Father. When he was nailed or vavved to the cross for six hours, by the way. And so the Lord is showing us that our most important connection is with him. You know, as we go through all the calendar months and everything, the Lord is just saying, relationship with me is the most important thing. And I will reveal that to you in so many ways, even through the prophetic calendar. So our most important connection is with God and it's through Jesus. Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Jesus is the only way to connect back to the Father. So the Lord wants to make sure we have that connection for it is vital. So if you've never received Jesus, I encourage you to do so. And you know, when we receive him into our hearts, we become reconnected back to the Father and His Spirit dwells with us and we become His permanent dwelling place. And just as a vav is a tent peg that secures a dwelling place, that's what Jesus did for us. And even now we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. We are a secure dwelling place in Him. As believers, let's have a revelation that we can be secure in any season, even in transitions where the world would 
say, oh, you can't be secure in a transition. In the natural, it may seem that things are hanging on by a thread, but we can be secure. He is reminding us that this is our true reality. He has made a covenant with us. He will never leave us or forsake us. So as we walk on, let us know this truth that we are not alone and we are better off than most of us think because he has engraved us on the palms of his hands and we are his. Now, if we look at ER in the Old Testament, I encourage you to break out your Bible and look through Exodus 15 through 18, and we'll see how God connected with the Israelites and revealed himself during that time of transition. And you know, let's stop and remember why God even redeemed the Israelites out of Egypt in the first place. He didn't set them free so that they could be their own God or walk in their own ways or run their own lives. The reason why he redeemed them is so that they could worship him in the desert. But you know, you can't really worship someone you don't know. Well, I mean, I guess you could, but that would be imitation, right? But God didn't want them to have imitation. He wanted to give them the real thing. He wanted to give them revelation. He wanted them to know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for themselves. And so he led them into the wilderness so he could speak to them and reveal himself to them there. In fact, the word for wilderness in Hebrew is called midbar. And that word also means to speak, to lead, and to counsel. And so, you know, when we read through the Bible, it seems as if God speaks loudly in the desert. You know, as we read through the story of the Exodus and, either, and even other times in scripture with, you know, of course, Moses and Hagar and even Jesus himself. But the fact is he is always speaking. His voice just seems louder in the desert because all the distractions are gone and there is stillness. So God brought Israel into a place of quiet, into the midbar, so he could speak to them. He brought them out of slavery, out of the world system, away from false gods, away from the false comforts of Egypt to reveal his true nature so that they could know him. So even now, he wants us to have a fresh revelation of who he is. And we may not be in a physical desert, but he wants to show us how we can walk securely in times of transition. And he calls us now to be still and know that he is God so that we can worship him, right? And even now, as we move through the biblical decade of 5780, it's this decade of declaration. It's connected to our mouth. And even the Hebrew letter pay, which is a picture of that mouth has two forms. And just like we have two forms, of our mouths, it's either opened or closed, right? And so we're learning that there is a time to speak and a time to be silent and listen. So this is a time to be still and know that he is God. It is a time for less talking and more listening. It's a time for us to turn down the chatter and the noise of the world and create an atmosphere to hear his voice so we can be still and know in our hearts that he is God. And guess what? He delights in revealing himself to us. We don't have to twist his arm. And he does this in so many ways, you know, through his people and through his creation. And it's been said of God that he is the one who reveals himself through words. And this is so true because the Lord reveals himself the most through his word, through the Bible. So if we want to know the Lord, all we have to do is open up the word. And if we want to know what God is like, all we have to do is look to Jesus. He is the word itself. And Hebrews says that he is the exact representation of the Father. He is the image of the invisible God. And even Jesus himself said, if you've seen me, You've seen the Father. So let's be encouraged. We don't have to settle for imitation. We can have the real thing. So let's be still and receive a fresh revelation of his great love for us. And then we can worship him and move forward in his love and confidence. 
So as we read on in Exodus, we will see that the Israelites are moving through the desert and they're also moving their mouths often in murmuring, especially when they came to this place of water and to only find that it was bitter. It's in Exodus 15 and they named that place Marah, which means bitter. And there they began to complain and murmur to Moses and they asked him to bring them back to Egypt. And, you know, I think they must have been delusional, definitely dehydrated. And, you know, that happens to us. We become spiritually dehydrated and we start talking crazy, like we want to go back to Egypt. But God showed Moses a tree and he showed him that tree and he instructed Moses to cast the tree into the water. And when he did, the waters became sweet. And that is a picture of the cross. And it was there that the Lord revealed himself to the Israelites as I am the Lord, your healer. And you know, the word ER in Hebrew is actually an acronym for I am the Lord, your healer. And so if we read on in Exodus, the Lord says, hey, I not only heal waters, but if you keep my commandments, I will heal you. Now, the problem with that is that we could never keep his commandments. So now, again, we're looking in the Old Testament, but now we are in the new and better covenant that has better promises. So there's no more ifs because Jesus paid it all. He kept the law perfectly. And when he died upon that tree, his blood gave us forgiveness of sins and his stripes gave us healing for our infirmities. So often in transition, the enemy tries to throw sickness on us, but the Lord wants us to have this fresh revelation that healing is a part of our salvation in Jesus, just as much as forgiveness of sins is. And you know, God's name he's saying is Jehovah Rapha, right? That he is the healer. That's his true nature. And if the healer lives in us, healing lives in us. So let us rise up in this resurrection power of Jesus that resides in us because healing is our portion. Now, as we read through Exodus 16 and 17, we see again the children of Israel continue moving and continue murmuring through the desert and hunger and thirst set in. And they began complaining to Moses and Aaron and they said, why did you bring us out here to kill us? And then the Lord said, I have heard your grumblings and now you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And there he provided supernatural food and drink for them and he revealed himself as Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. It was practically a month after Passover when God rained down bread from heaven. It's the first time, if we look up here on the chalkboard, that manna fell from heaven. And they had no idea what it was. In fact, that's why they called it manna, because the word manna means, what is it? And so manna was like a superfood because it supernaturally sustained them for 40 years in these desert harsh conditions, but they had to gather it for themselves. And so manna is a picture of the word of God. It is a superfood like no other, but we have to gather it and partake of it for ourselves so we can know. You know, it's like eating at a restaurant that is so great versus hearing about it. When you eat there, then you know for yourself that it is good or not, right? So God is saying, taste and see that the Lord is good for yourself. And you know, sometimes we approach the Bible and we're saying like, what is it? What does it mean? You know, especially in times of transition, there are a lot of questions that come up and the Lord is just saying, Call to me and I will answer you and I'll tell you great and mighty things, that which you do not know. And that's out of Jeremiah 33, 3. And even Jesus himself told his disciples in Matthew 13, he says to the disciples and he says to us, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom. He gives us 
the ability to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And one of the mysteries is partaking of this supernatural food, the superfood of his word. It quickens our mortal bodies and his words are spirit and life. That's out of John 6, 63. And you know, one word can change everything in our lives. One word from God. Even Jesus, when he was tempted in the wilderness, proclaimed this truth. In Mark 4, 4, he says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So let's partake of this supernatural bread daily. So now we notice as we read on that they began to thirst and they were about to stone Moses when God showed Moses a stone to strike. And when he did, a river came out in the desert out of that stone. And that is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Check out 1 Corinthians 10, 4. And it says of Jesus that he was the rock that followed them in the desert. They were not alone is there in the desert and we are not alone either. Even Jesus said to the woman at the well, everyone who drinks of this water, of this natural water, they'll be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I give them, they will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And so this is also referring to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the refreshing that praying in the Spirit gives us. That's talked about in Isaiah 48, 12. So the Lord is revealing to us that he not only provides and freely gives to us, but he himself is our provision. And he supernaturally sustains and satisfies us. John 6 says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. So we have to partake of the superfoods, the bread of his word, and the living water of his spirit. And as we do, we will gain strength and refreshment from the inside out. Now, as we read on in Exodus, we'll see that the Israelites were strengthened and refreshed by these superfoods in the desert, and now they were ready for war. Check it out, Exodus 17, Israel faced their first foe after leaving Egypt, and it was a war with the Amalekites. And according to the Jewish historian Josephus, the Israelites feared the enemy at first in the natural, as we often do. But what did Moses do? Moses reminded them of the miracles that God performed. And it was then that they got the revelation that God's presence was their most valuable asset. And Josephus continues and he says that their minds were elevated and their hearts were set on victory. Their minds were renewed with who God was and who they were in him. And so as we read through the story, we see that Moses raised his hands up in worship while the war was going on and that he physically connected to other like-minded believers, his brothers, Aaron and Hur. And as he connected with them, the Israelites won the first war that they were ever in. And according to Josephus, not one Hebrew died. So our memories can start leaving us during times of transition or when we're in the desert. So God wants us to be encouraged and connect with other like-minded believers and be reminded that our most valuable asset is his presence. And we have it 24 seven forever. So when we get a fresh revelation of that, we will stand secure in any battle and even in the battle of transition itself. And so after this victory, Moses erected an altar in the name of Jehovah Nisi, right here on the chalkboard, and that means the Lord is my banner. So, you know, when we raise a banner or raise a flag, whether it's to a nation or a certain sporting team, we're saying that we are connected with that team. We are for them. We identify with them. We put all of our chips on them. That's what Moses was doing. He 
realized that God was the victor and he set up a banner in the name of God. Jehovah Nisi also means the Lord, the conqueror. And that reminded me of Romans 8, where it says that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And I read that and I say, wow, that's, that's got to be pretty awesome, more than a conqueror. But what does that actually mean? And recently I've heard an example of that. And it, it, it went like this, that, that there was a great boxer who trained his whole life to enter into the fight of his life. He trained his whole life, he dieted, he disciplined himself for the greatest match, and he entered the ring and he took all the blows and he came out a conqueror. And he won the prize, he won the purse, he won the belt, he won all the authority, and he went home to his bride and she said, well, how did you do? And he said, I won, I'm a conqueror, I won everything, and guess what, everything I earned is is yours. You didn't have to fight, you didn't have to train, but you get all of the benefits. You are more than a conqueror. And that is awesome because Jesus did it all for us and we get all the benefits. That's our true reality in Him. And so when the battles come, let us be reminded and let us be in rest in our Jehovah Nisi and who we are in Him. We are more than a conqueror and His banner over us is love. So after witnessing the miracles and victory of Jehovah Nisi, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had his own revelation and he said, now I know that the Lord is greater than all the other gods. And speaking of Jethro, we will see in Exodus 18 how God used him to bring a revelation to Moses and Jethro gave him counsel after battle. It was in Exodus 18 where Jethro saw Moses was burdened by overseeing all the people. And Jethro said to Moses, the thing that you are doing is not good. You will surely wear out both you and the people that are with you for this task is too heavy for you and you could not do it alone. And he said, so listen to me and I will give you counsel and God will be with you. And it says next that Moses did all that Jethro advised him in. And we see this secret revealed in the stars. The constellations are the gospel are on circuit over our heads. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. And in this month, it is connected to the constellation Taurus. We see it up here in the chalkboard and it's a ruling ox or a beast of burden. And the Lord is saying, cast your cares upon me. First Peter 5, 7. You know, the enemy will try to keep us bogged down with things and with cares and with worries and things that we're not even meant to carry half the time. And he'll even make us feel guilty for dumping all of our cares on God. Like, how could we do that, you know? But the truth is that when we cast our cares upon upon the Lord, it is not selfish. It is a form of worship. Even Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And if you look at a yoke, do you know a yoke is a connecting piece? Here we are in this connecting month. It's a connecting piece which enables two people or two animals to work together. Jesus is saying, work together with me by taking upon my yoke. It's easy and light. He broke the yoke of slavery, Leviticus 26, 13, so that we can move freely. So often we take upon a yoke of slavery again. And so are we feeling heavy laden or burdened? It's a clue that we're off balance and we're taking on too much. So let's listen to the Lord and ask him to show us these things that we have taken on, that we're not supposed to take on, that we need to delegate perhaps to others, or even there may be things that we no longer need as we move into this new season. So let's listen and receive a revelation and rest of his light an easy yoke. Now, if we look at the tribe of this month up here in the upper 
corner here, it is the tribe of Issachar. And through Issachar, the Lord wants to show us how important godly counsel is. And again, especially in transition. And so Issachar, they were known as advisors and counselors. We can read about that in 1 Chronicles 12, 32. It says of Issachar that they were men who understood the times with knowledge of what Israel should do. And so you say, well, how did they know that? Well, they immersed themselves in the word of God. Psalm 119, 105 says that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So they immersed themselves and they knew the times and the seasons. They even contemplated numbers, even in this season of counting the Omer up to Pentecost. And you know, we don't have to envy the members of the tribe of Issachar. We can be like them and we can learn from them. All we have to do is connect with the word of God for ourselves. And as we do, the Lord will connect the dots in our lives. Proverbs 19, 8 says that he who gets wisdom loves his own soul. And you know, the tribe of Issachar actually reminds me of the Bereans that are talked about in the book of Acts, who search the scriptures daily for themselves. Again, revelation, not imitation, and it requires action. Speaking of counsel, as believers, we've been given an ever-present counselor within us, and that is the Holy Spirit himself. John 14, 26, Jesus said the counselor, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. And even in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, as believers, it said that we have the mind of Christ. We have his wisdom in our spirit. And so we access the wisdom of God by praying spirit to spirit. In 1 Corinthians 2, it says we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So we have everything we need already to access the wisdom of God for ourselves and even to bless others. And we do that by connecting to his word and connecting spirit to spirit, even praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. And he also wants us to be encouraged to connect with other like-minded believers. As Proverbs 11, 14 says, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. You know, this is underscored in the action that is connected to this month. It is the action of introspection, reflection, and revelation. And it's also connected to the body part, which is the right kidney and the kidneys if we look at it they filter the blood and that is actually a picture pointing to our spiritual filtration system and it's known as our discernment now in psalm 16 7 it says i will bless the lord who counsels me indeed my mind my kidneys instruct me in the night and as born again believers, we have the Holy Spirit in us. It's a new spirit because we're born again, right? And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So he gives us discernment and he leads us in to truth. So when Jesus said that it was better for him to go so that the Holy Spirit could come, it truly was better because now he resides in us 24 seven. So let's get a fresh revelation and tap into the benefits of the Holy Spirit within us. He is not only our spiritual GPS that leads us and guides us and comforts us, but he is also our spiritual radar that gives us discernment as we move with him. So in this month of ER, we'll also see how the Lord also physically establishes his people in his land and in his house. Check out 1 Kings chapter 6. This is when construction began here in the month of ER on Solomon's temple. And also as we look ahead in modern history, in 1948, on the fourth day of ER, this is when the state of Israel was re-established as a nation. And again, in 1967, on ER 28, after the Six-Day War, Israel obtained Jerusalem. So we want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Lord has chosen Zion. 
and he has desired it for his dwelling place forever and he's also chosen us he has grafted us in so let's be encouraged he is not only establishing our hearts but he also establishes us in the physical as well even now as we move into this new spiritual year he may be shifting us into new positions of dwelling places and work and we can thank him in advance and so lastly in yar this is the month where jesus himself walked the earth in his resurrected body he revealed himself to his disciples even though they did not recognize him at first you can check this out in john chapters 20 and 21 in luke 24 to thomas he showed him his scars to the two walking on the road to emmaus he explained himself through all the scriptures he opened their minds up to understand the scriptures and he does the same for us and actually even more so because we have the Holy Spirit in us now 24 7 as our teacher and so guys in wrapping up the Lord's desire has not changed we do not serve an unknown God he is a God that can be known and he delights in revealing himself to us and we will find him when we search with him with all of our hearts even jesus said this in john 17 3 this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent eternal life is not just eternal life in heaven with him eternal life is knowing god now and we can know him and so lord we thank you that there are treasures to be found in the season of transition that you are speaking secrets in the stillness and you have set up a table before us in the wilderness lord so that we can partake of the living water and the bread of life jesus himself thank you lord that you are the way through the desert and you will lead us right into the promised land and we can't miss it as we abide in you and so guys i just want to leave you with this scripture out of jeremiah 9 23 and 24 and it says this let not the wise man glory in his own wisdom and let not the mighty man glory in his own might nor let the rich man glory in his own riches but let him who glories glory in this that he understands and knows me so thank you for listening and be blessed and be encouraged as you walk on with him in this month of er and always